Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call Wild and today we have an exclusive look at the brand new map Rancho del Arroyo. Thank you to Expansive Worlds developers and the community managers for giving us access to this early build of the brand new reserve. Now I do just real quickly want to state that this is not released yet and this was provided by EW for me to show off to you guys along with other creators and it's going to be a blast. I'm very excited to be able to check things out and we are going to be going over all the patch notes at the end of this video. So if you're here for the patch notes, stay tuned to the end. We will go over them. There is a lot of juicy changes and fixes that we have waited for for a very long time. So stay tuned if you guys want to hear all that. But first of all, let's go ahead and check out the brand new Kuso model 1897 shotgun, which should be right here in the shotgun category and that is beautiful that is super beautiful right there so we're gonna use the vaquero I think this is gonna be a fun one to use and also you guys might notice that we already have 700,000 cash and like a hundred different skill and perk points and that is because this is a save file provided by the developers so that we can show off the entire map fully unlocked without having to worry about uh, having to traverse the map and unlock the outposts ourselves since this is just to show everything off to you guys uh, once it actually full releases I'll have to start everything from scratch on my normal save so none of this will carry over this is all just for your guys' viewing pleasure so we are not going to waste any time getting straight into the action. Let's go over and see what this little track is over here. This is kind of that little track that they give you when you first start out. This is also the brand new shotgun that we have in hand right now. And for those that were curious, yes, you can put the scope on it. So just like the 12 gauge pump, you can put a scope on it. And that is a whitetail track. Well, that's going to be awesome to go after. I'm actually really excited to see how the whitetail work on this map, where they end up uh, having their drink zones, and if they drink at the same time as late, and it's going to be really interesting to find out, but we are probably going to start by trying to chase down some pheasants, so let's go see if we can find some. Ooh, okay, so that is our first animal that we hear, and it is a Mexican bobcat. I'm actually very interested in seeing what these guys are like up close. We saw a little bit of them in the EW live streams, but we didn't really get to take a look at many different fur types because for some reason during that stream, all they really found were the gray fur type or uh, I not gray, but the tan fur type, I should say. So I'm curious to see what the other ones are like. And that is an antelope jackrabbit also. Sounds like we got everything showing up already. Okay, so that is a white-tailed deer in a drink zone. And they drink from 8.30 to 11.30, so they actually drink earlier than what they would on Layton, which is interesting, but it's actually at a pretty good time. And it does appear that the sound is a little bit bugged for spotting new need zones, but I mean, that's actually not that big of a deal because most people didn't really like that uh, anyway, so that is really awesome to see. That is a lot of white-tailed deer. They are all over this lake, and this is literally right next to the starter lodge. That is so cool. So, we know for a fact that whitetail are everywhere already. We can tell that just from looking at these guys right here. This is awesome. I'm so excited to grind the great one on this map. It's going to be so much more fun than it would be on Layton, but something that's got my attention a little bit more than these whitetail right now is the fact that we have some pheasants over there and we definitely need to go over and take these guys out but on the way over we might as well take out a white-tailed deer and it actually sounds like they got new warning calls too that is amazing so a lot of people were pointing out that the whitetail's tail looked a little bit bushier and Yep, they definitely did change the tails for the white-tailed deer along with a brand new warning call. That is so awesome. I'm glad to see the white tail getting a little bit of love. Maybe eventually we can get some better true racks for them. That would be an amazing change. Let's go ahead and grab this. Get a quick look at the new tail. That is super awesome. I'm a big fan of that. That's really cool. I am already in love with the look of this map just from this brief look that we've got in these first few minutes. 
It is such a beautiful reserve. And it sounds like the bighorn sheep got a new warning call also. That is so cool to see some of the species that were already in game getting a little bit of an update to make them a little bit better. Here's our first flock of pheasants. We need to try and get these guys to break. Or not break, but to flush out. Which is a brand new mechanic with the pheasants, by the way. Which is pretty cool. Let's get that. And... That one is going in the landed animation, so we actually don't want to take the shot on that. That is one thing about these that we saw in the live stream. You do want to make sure that they are in full flight. There we go. Absolutely smoked it. And that reload animation is so smooth for the brand new shotgun. Let's go ahead and claim this. This is our first pheasant, a common female. Nothing too special, but that is an awesome model for them. I really like that. Unfortunately, we didn't get any uh, roosters to break or uh, flush out. I'm going to keep saying breaked, I feel, because of uh, duck hunting and goose hunting, but it is unfortunate that we didn't get any f uh, roosters to flush out, but we did get a couple hens. And man, that, wow, that bobcat sounds amazing. I wonder if we can see it at all. I don't think so. We might have to push it out a little bit more, but I definitely want to get a look at that. But here is the second pheasant we took out. It's just another hen, but that is awesome. I feel like these are going to be one of my new favorite things to hunt. I absolutely love them so far. Oh, there we go. That right there is a rooster. Let's see if we can get this guy. Come on. Come on, little guy. Hey. What are you doing? There we go. Probably would have helped if I wasn't 0 to 50 meters and trying to take a uh, 5 meter shot, but we did get him down in the end. So this is going to be our first look at a rooster pheasant. That is so awesome looking. I can't get over how nice the models are for the pheasants. That is so cool. That is a 16 scoring gold, so this is a relatively small one, but that still looks really cool. So we're not going to tax this guy. I do want to find a better one before we do anything like that, but that's so awesome looking. These guys are going to be a lot of fun. I can already tell. Oh, oh, there it is. That right there is the bobcat. Look at that right there. I think that one might have been a little bit bugged, but... That'll give us an opportunity to take a look at it. I am so excited to see this little thing up close. All right, so that is an awesome looking bobcat right there. Uh, we got our dog right next to it. That's actually a really cool screenshot right there. Looks like a dog has beat the cat in this scenario. That's super cool. Let's get a look at her. This is a brown fur type. So this is a little bit different than what we saw in the EW stream. We saw the tan fur type. This is the brown one right here. That's pretty cool. We're actually going to tax this because I don't know how many bobcats we're actually going to find today. That's awesome looking though. I like that. So we are now in the very north of the map and I wanted to try and show off as many different parts of the map as we could today to kind of give you guys an idea of the varying types of terrain that you will come across on this brand new reserve. And this is exactly what I was wanting out of a map. I have been asking for a desert map for so long and this is exactly what I envisioned it as. And as you can see, this is just pretty much wide open for just miles on miles. It's so cool to see. And honestly, I think it's going to be fun to hunt out here. Ooh, that is another Mexican bobcat. Ooh, there it is right there. Oh my gosh, is that a rare? Hold up, I think... Is that an albino? I think it might be. I th Did we just get an albino Mexican bobcat? That is so cool if we did. Oh my gosh, please let that be an albino. I mean, it's actually really hard to tell. I think it might be a rare. Yeah, that's got to be some kind of rare. I can't see that not being a rare. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at it. That is just a common. Okay, why? Okay then, interesting. You know, at first glance I could have swore that that one right there was an albino, but I guess it was probably just the lighting. Must have been the way the sun was bouncing off of it. Cause that is just a common. And it sounds like we have another one somewhat close too. That appears to be another common one running off. So far we've seen only females unfortunately. Like to see a male one eventually. But I don't know if we will today. I want to try and see as many animals as possible so... I don't know how many uh, bobcats we'll be looking at from now on. Okay, there we go. We have not only the antelope jackrabbit, but also the collared peccary, or as it's known in a lot of places, the javelina. I'm pretty excited to take out one of these javelina. I have been excited for them probably the most out of everything beside the pheasants. They are one species that I've talked about many, many times in the past at how I'd love to have them in game, and now we finally do. So, provided we can get one in the open, we will definitely take it out. We definitely need to try and get one of the uh, antelope jackrabbit down too, but it looks like those bobcat are scaring them off. And it looks like the peccaries are getting scared off too. So yeah, this could be an issue. It appears the bobcats are kind of spooking everything in the area. But that right there is probably the best shot we're going to get as of now. Let's see if we can get the Craig's zeroing and hopefully adjust as much as we need. And that was close, but not quite. There we go. Third time's a charm. We managed to get an antelope jackrabbit down. All right, so it looks like the colored peccaries rest from 1130 to 14. And the antelope jackrabbit rest from 7 to 1130. So that's good to know. Uh, we actually have... Both of their zones very close to each other, which is probably why we spoke, spooked uh, both of them out at the same time. Okay, so that is the warning call of a collared peccary, and that's one of them right there. They are alerted, so ooh, that's actually a perfect shot right there. And of course it turns a little bit more. Let's just take that shot though. I don't know if that was vital, but it definitely hit it, so we'll at least get to take a look at it. But here we have the antelope jackrabbit, which is probably going to become my favorite rabbit species. They look really cool. Uh, absolutely massive ears. I'm wondering if they're going to have any special fur types like uh, albino or melanistic or any of those because some of the rabbit species have them and then others don't. Like the scrub hare has no rares, so I hope these guys will have rares. I'm definitely eager to find out. There we have it, our first ever little collared peccary. I am so excited to take a look at this. That is an awesome looking model. That looks so good. I am so happy that they finally added these. This one is a dark gray fur type and it says we, ooh. Okay, so we accidentally hit the head. That's unfortunate. I see why it didn't drop immediately now. Quite unfortunate, but Let's go try to find another one. I did hear them call, so hopefully we can get the others. There we go. There is a male one. Let's see if we can get it down. And I'm guessing it was behind the hill. That's a little bit unfortunate. But we should get another shot very shortly. And in fact, there is a few of them right there. Maybe we can get that four. I don't actually know where it went though. We did see a four earlier, but I don't see it now. See if we can get this guy though, if he'll just slow down briefly. We might actually have to take a running shot. Okay, so that's actually a pretty heavy weight estimate, uh, collared peccary. I think that has to be the level four that we saw earlier. I'm hoping. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can get one of those down. And that actually is the level four, so that's perfect. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Let's try to get down as many as we can. Oh my gosh. Well, we just got three of them, and that's a fourth. Well, that's pretty awesome. That was uh, pretty much perfect. I'm guessing they had to have had a zone near this area. But this is going to give us a great look at the collared peccary. That's a really cool looking one right there. I think that's a different fur type than the others. Let's get a screenshot of this. That's pretty cool. And then we also have these ones over here just kind of lining up. 
That is super awesome right there. And we got our dog in the background too, so let's go ahead and claim these one by one. The first one right here is a dark gray level 4 male scoring 123.40. That's a pretty good one. Looks like diamond is 144.20, so they're very similar to the feral pigs when it comes to score. That's pretty cool though. Let's tax that. I'm going to try and tax a few different fur types for you guys. That is a brown female, so we'll go ahead and tax that also. Not too bad. I am so far enjoying these guys. They are a ton of fun. That's another brown female, so just breeze by her. And this last one, I think this is a different fur type too. And yeah, dark brown female. So that's pretty cool. Go ahead and tax her also. I am liking these guys a lot so far. And oh my. Well, that's a interesting face to say the least. But still pretty awesome. I'm really enjoying these. As I said earlier, you guys know that I have wanted the Collared Peccary or Pavelina in the game for over a year at this point. I've been saying it pretty much ever since I started doing YouTube. I've wanted these guys in the game for a long time. I've wanted pheasants in the game for a long time. So to have both of them in the game finally and on the same reserve is just absolutely amazing. I'm so excited about it and it looks like... I think we just found another outpost so that's pretty nice actually. It looks like they didn't unlock all of the outposts for us, just uh, the majority of the main ones. So there's a few others that we still need to go look for, and that'll give us a little bit of mystery for full release. So I think for this last portion of the video, what I'm going to do, since we haven't found the Rio Grande turkey, that is the only new species that we have yet to see, we're going to go look for some of them in a part of the map that we haven't been to. We're going to head over in this direction and see what we can find over here. Because we've already checked a little bit of the middle and some of the northwest and found pretty much everything except the turkeys so we're gonna look for those a little bit but while we show some footage of hunting the turkeys and whatever else we come across we're gonna go over the patch notes let's go ahead and go over all of these patch notes there's a lot of really awesome ones to go through uh, the first one brand new feature Added support for the new paid DLC, Rancho del Arroyo, which we already knew. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Spotlight bug fixes. The first one they list, Diamond Whitetail Deer will no longer weigh more than 100 kgs. This is a massive fix that we have been asking for for a very long time because there's been a lot of bugged great ones that were showing up as overweight level 3s or level 4s or level 5s and they just ended up scoring diamond but they were overweight so that is really nice to see that fixed. Uh, backpacks will no longer be visible in first person camera. Uh, fix the slow motion bug for dog at tracker level 1 and 16. Another huge fix that a lot of people have been waiting for. Fix the crash when user orders the dog to track within 50 meters of a rabbit corpse. Another much welcomed fix. Fix the issue of tents disappearing when an active dog nearby when user resumes gameplay after quitting to main menu. Another massive fix that has been preventing well this bug has been preventing me from using the dogs and now that it's fixed I can actually start using the dogs again without having to worry about losing my tents. Animal corpses will no longer be invisible after walking outside of render range and back. This has been one of the hottest topics in Call of the Wild in the last month or so, a lot of people were very upset that this bug was a thing, and it's so nice to see it finally getting fixed. Fix the issue of missing antlers on the trophies in the trophy lodge. This fix is not retroactive. And as far as I understand, that means that if any, any trophies are currently missing their antlers in the lodge, I don't think those will get fixed, but it won't be happening anymore. So none of the future trophies will have that bug. Fix the issue of ATV lights turning on slash off at nighttime when third person camera is toggled. I did notice that one a couple times, so that's kind of nice. Now on to the additional updates category, uh, animals and environment. Rework the spawning rates for geese, another huge fix that people have been looking forward to. A lot of people have had issues with geese just not respawning and it looks like that is now fixed. Now here is a huge fix that I think that me talking to them about this is what prompted them to even look into this issue because it has actually happened to me before and a lot of other people were mentioning it. So I brought it up to TK and it looks like he passed it on to the team and they got it fixed. 
uh, fix the disappearing of Great One Whitetails that previously existed in the reserve's animal population after restarting the game. So basically what was happening is Great Ones were turning into regular diamonds if you were to restart your game or go to another map without killing the Great One, he would turn into a diamond instead. And so that is what happened to me with my uh, bugged Great One, and that is now fixed. I really hope it is completely fixed, because if it is, then that means that they might be able to add in another Great One eventually, if the Great Ones are currently fixed with this patch. Dog will no longer be slow in notifying user of a harvested animal. Uh, buffalo near Lookout Tower will no longer cause damage to the user on the first floor. Fix the issue where female dogs showed up even when user purchased a male dog. Uh, I didn't really ever notice that, but I guess I didn't really pay too much attention. Uh, weapons, gear, and character fixes. Hunter mate screen will not go invisible after switching reserves now. Fix the issue where scope becomes invisible for a weapon while switching ammo types. I definitely noticed that one a few times. Uh, this is an Xbox One fix. Fix the issue of user's character drifting or sliding during gameplay when controller is reconnected after being disconnected. I think I remember a couple people mentioning that so that's a nice fix to get out. Fix the issue of sight disappearing on bows after switching to a different arrow type. Fix the issue with rangefinder bow sight not displaying the range or aim dots. So there's a lot of really good fixes coming through. It's so nice to see. So now we get into a bunch of uh, user interface and multiplayer fixes. These are some that uh, uh, I've noticed quite a bit myself for a lot of these, so it's really nice to see them getting fixed. Fix the issue where player could not jump or go prone after changing reserve while in tree stand. This has happened to me quite a bit. Um, remove the black circle which appeared around the waypoint marker. Removed and updated the placeholder text in the My Dogs tab when user does not own any dog. Uh, fix the dog status icon while tracking live prey. I know this was bugging a lot of people that the dog icon was upside down. That is now fixed. The effective range stats for rifle ammo will no longer display low values in store and inventory. That one, as far as I know, was just a visual bug. Fix the issue where incorrect values were displayed for individual reserve and global play stats in the codex menu. Fix the issue of user not being able to fast scroll through the EULA pop-up using a controller. Uh, miscellaneous fixes. User will be able to pet their dog in the trophy lodge. That's kind of nice. Uh, dog will now gain a portion of total XP when starting to track a harvest and the rest of the XP will be added when the harvest is found So your dog actually has to find the animal before he'll get the full XP That's a good change I think because it was way too easy to level him up It will be easier now to complete the mission the perfect Libre in Quattro Colinas Reserve uh, Now we get on to the last section of patch notes improvements our character artists worked their magic in updating color and fur textures for existing animals like whitetail deer, mule deer, coyote, bighorn sheep, and the Miriam turkey, which, as you guys are going to see in this video, and you might have already seen it at this point, the Miriam's, or the regular turkeys that were on SRP are now the Miriam's turkey, which is what they should have been at the start, but now we have the Rio Grande turkey and the Miriam's turkey, which is pretty cool. User can now see other users' waypoints in map during a multiplayer session. That's actually a really cool fix, so we'll be able to put down waypoints for other players to see. Made some audio engine performance improvements, refactored and standardized pricing for multi-trophy mounts. User's character will get hurt by the cacti if they collide with them. Enabled footprints for dog in snow. That's actually kind of a cool change, so you can actually see the footprints from your dog when you're walking through snow. Uh, the maximum tracker level that dog can achieve is 15, which is now indicated in tracker level icon on dog screen. It's like some quality of life stuff to let you know what the max level is. Dog will now sniff each blood spot more evidently while tracking blood clues. That's going to be kind of cool for immersion's sake. Added a check mark to indicate which dog is active in the kennel screen if the user has more than one dog. Now users can auto run using a controller. And it gives you like all the controls, which that will... You guys will be able to see that once it full releases, so I'm not going to read off all of the controls for it, but that is the end of the patch notes. A lot of really amazing fixes and improvements, and I gotta say I'm a big fan of all of the improvements they've made to the animals. Um, at the time of recording this patch notes section right here, uh, it's actually a couple days after I've recorded the footage that you guys are seeing, so I've been able to explore the map a lot more, and I gotta say, I am a huge fan of the improvements to the whitetail and the coyote. 
it is so nice to see them get some improvements. I haven't really noticed much with the Mule Deer or Bighorn, but I might have to take a little bit of a closer look on them. But overall, I am just blown away with the amount of fixes and changes and positive improvements that they've made with this patch. There's a couple new bugs that have popped up, but most of them are very minor and the devs know about a lot of them, so most likely they'll get fixed very soon. But anyway, let's jump back to the video. I just wanted to real quickly read all this stuff off for you guys. Alright guys, so now that we have gone over the patch notes, let's go ahead and set up a bunch of these brand new animals along with comparing the two turkeys. And as you guys saw in that footage, they did rename the old turkeys to the Miriam's turkey. So we now have the Miriam's turkey and the Rio Grande turkey, so that is a pretty awesome thing. And it looks like they might have changed the uh, font and stuff a little bit with things too. But let's get both of these turkeys set up along with everything else and then we will jump to that. Alright, so we now have everything put up from today's hunt, and as you can see, there actually is a difference between the two common types for the turkey. There's a lot more brown in the Rio Grande turkey, and the head is also a lot more blue, and if you look at the fan, you can see how there's kind of like a white line in the middle, and on this one, it's more of a gray line. And in fact, the tails are quite different between the two, along with the wings being a lot different. This one, like I was saying, has a lot more brown. So there's a little bit more of a difference than what we expected there to be. And it is much more noticeable now that they're side by side, which is kind of what they were saying was going to be the case. Now, one thing that we're going to go over that I actually did not uh, get myself. This was with this uh, world save when EW sent it to me, but there's a molting fur type pheasant. Uh, that's actually pretty awesome. I didn't expect that, but that's honestly really cool. So uh, for those of you that don't know, molting is pretty much when they start losing their feathers. And that is a really awesome fur type to have, or I guess feather type technically, but you guys know what I mean. There is the brown female bobcat that we got. We got it up on the wall here. I like that almost every single species that was added can be put on these small plaques. It's actually really nice. There is the common pheasant that we took out. The pheasants actually have really cool mounts. I like it quite a bit. And then we have the gray female one that you guys saw us get during the patch note reading. That is pretty cool right there. So I'm excited to hunt more of these pheasants. I definitely think they're going to be my favorite part of this map. Along with the colored peccary which we have right here. They are relatively small so definitely uh... Nice that they can fit on these smaller plaques, as you guys can see. And we also have a few of the rabbits. This is that modeled fur type that we got. I still don't know if this is a rare, or if this is just another uncommon or common. But it's cool to see a little bit of variety, and I, I actually saw quite a bit of variety with the antelope jackrabbits. I was pretty surprised, but it's pretty cool. Definitely really cool to see all the stuff that they've added with this reserve. I like these new species quite a bit. As for which ones are going to be my favorite, it's really hard to say. I'm going to have to do a little bit more hunting them. But anyway, guys, we're probably going to go ahead and end it there for our first look at the brand new reserve, Rancho del Arroyo. As of recording this, I'm still waiting for the OK to show some of the other content and stuff that's coming with this map. But once we are able to get the OK from EW, then I will put up another video showing all of the brand new stuff that's been added with this patch. So... Until next time, guys, if you're new, subscribe to the channel, click the like button, and ring that notification bell. If you have anything that you'd like to say, if there's any uh, stuff you'd like me to look at in the next video, be sure to put it down in the comments below, and I'll see if I can get to it. I also try to respond to as many of them as possible, so if there's a question you have, feel free to drop it in the comments. But with that being said, thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace!